I highlighted how the energy we enjoyed as part of our worship had not yet returned. One contributing factor, at least for me, has been the frustration arising out of the uncertainty of not knowing what our worship will be like week to week. I know this has frustrated many of you as well, as many have asked me why I can't just make a decision about how we're going to worship and stick with it, while others have asked, how do I decide? whether we are outside, inside, or online only. So I thought this week, I would step back from the usual message and try to answer these two very important questions, plugging in a little Jesus along the way. Let's start by looking at that first question, the decision. The decision until recently was not ours to make. Following the outbreak of COVID, the bishop directed the suspension of all public worship, not allowing us to gather even outdoors out of a caution with regards to community spread. To resume worship, he established some pretty strict guidelines. And when we were finally able to meet those diocesan guidelines, we were allowed to begin worshiping together. Then, the guidelines changed. As the bishop sought a more common measure to use across the diocese. Guidelines he hoped would enable even more parishes to reopen. Unfortunately, shortly after instituting this change, the number of COVID cases began to rise quickly exceeding the limits of safety as directed by the diocese. As the guidelines and measures of safety changed, so too must we. Now, we could debate whether or not the guidelines are too strict or not strict enough, but such a debate would be an exercise of futility as we are part of something beyond ourselves. We are not a congregational church. We are part of a national denomination, one that has structure and therefore rules of order to be followed. One of the rules is that we are to follow the guidance of our bishop. This doesn't mean we blindly do as the bishop says, but we do trust in their guidance grounded in the truth that is laid out in Scripture. And at the heart of that truth is the commandment Jesus gave to us, to love one another. If we love, Scripture tells us we will care for one another and seek to do no harm by what we do. That means as the danger level increases, so too must the safety measures we take. While we could revert back to online only worship until the threat of COVID is behind us, which may be never, that's not what a majority of this parish want. People I am told want to gather together. They just want to do it safely. Here's the thing. What one person sees as safe, another may not. Now, if I may offer one observation to safety, in respects to safety, when it comes to worship, at least worship here at CHS. When we are able to gather indoors, the way we invite people to sit, our use of masks and hand sanitizing stations, the cleaning that our cleaning crew does, and how our social distancing is monitored and maintained, it feels safer here than any restaurant I've been in since they've reopened. Now we may not sing, and when we are together we may use funny 
muddy little cups for communion. But I still feel that what we safely share is sacred. And even though the energy is not at the level we once enjoyed, knowing that God was with us, and that we were with God, is the best blessing we can know being in community. Whether we are gathered here or around the altar, outside in the parking lot, or online in your living rooms. Do I wish we were all together here in one place? You bet I do. But not to such a degree that I would intentionally place any of our lives at risk. Which brings me to question number two. How do we decide inside, outside, online only? An early decision is made on Thursday mornings as we finalize our announcements based on the numbers posted on the designated website and the direction these numbers are headed. For those who wonder what website the bishop has directed us to use, I did send out that link a couple of weeks ago. I can send it out again this week if you would like to see what it is that I see. But very simply, when the seven day average number of new COVID cases per 100,000 people in our communities is 20 or less, that's communities I'm talking, Sarpy, Douglas, and Cass, the counties in which our members live, the bishop says we can hold indoor surfaces. If it's greater, we must either be outside or online only. That choice is left up to us. On Saturday mornings, I, I review the numbers again. I look at the weather forecast for Sunday morning and then post an announcement on Facebook and our website to send out a group text to affirm our earlier decision or to announce I know that waiting until Saturday for a final decision is uncomfortable for some. But over time, we will learn to accept the changes we must make in the interest of safety and community. For those who do not want to wrestle with the uncertainty this creates, the good news is we will always broadcast our services online. Technology permitting on time, too. This week, the number of average, uh, the average number of cases per 100,000 was 43. Well above the 20 allowed by the diocese. We could have met outside today. And I know some of you would have been there. But with the forecast being 40 degrees, it made more sense to move our service online only for this week. And I suspect if the rising COVID wave we are on does not come down soon, as the temperatures fall and winter approaches, yes, I said winter. If anybody looked out their window early this morning, there was snow on the ground. We'll be online for at least the next few weeks, if not the next few months. This is one reason we sent out our pledge cards this year via the email, asking people to use the link we had to our website to submit their pledge, because we didn't know if we were able to gather together again to collect your offerings. For those who have already responded, thank you. God bless. For those who are yet to we trust you will continue to support our shared mission and ministry. Yesterday, during the Diocesan Annual Council, which was held virtually, in one of the small group discussions I was part of, one of the people wondered what I think some of us wonder. What would 
our mission be when we again come together? I really wanted to tell them what I'm about to tell you. Because, see, they're at a church that hadn't had a chance to come together to worship yet. And that is that our mission has not and will not change. The only thing that will change is how we go about it. Our mission as Christians and as the church is to make known the love of God revealed to us in and through Jesus Christ. And our ministry? Our ministry is to help build and strengthen relationships that grow out of the love of God that we share. This is the same mission and ministry that Paul gives thanks for in his letter to the Thessalonians. Knowing that they face persecution, that they are in the midst of hard times, he thanks them and God that they, empowered by the Holy Spirit, have remained steadfast in their mission and ministry to be a community that bears witness to the love they know in their midst, using the gifts and blessings they have received. We too can be such a community, one that bears witness in the midst and in the face of adversity. Like the early church, we may have to adapt our ways in the face of obstacles we encounter to share with others that love, grace, and mercy of God we know. But as we do, as we do, we might be surprised at the energy we generate. Energy that helps us carry on caring for those in need. Those who are part of our community, as well as those who are not. Living into and the sharing of our mission and ministry can be something that draws people to us. And as they are drawn closer to us, if our motives and what we do are right, they will draw also closer to God. The joy this brings can overcome any frustration we feel. And we will then be the church we are called to be. Amen.